everyone, Jillian Ahonen here. I have an empty house, which you guys are learning, that's rare. And I decided, you know, I've actually never talked about my book. I mentioned my book. Most of you know I've published a book. Uh, if you follow me on social media, I take polls and I uh, take portions of my book and I write devotionals and I put those out quite regularly, but I've actually never pulled aside and talked about my book, the backstory, what it's about. Um, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to do that today. <laughs> I don't know why I never thought of this before. So nothing fancy, totally casual, except for my cute little display right here. Um, but I just wanted to share um, what my book is about and um, encourage you to buy it and read it if you haven't already. It's called Life is Muddy. So there you go. The cover looks like mud. I think she nailed it. My designer was awesome. If you look closely, there's gold in the mud. Um, and that's more just symbolic because the book is Life is Muddy, Living with the Power of an Ever-Present God and Redefining Life's Mud. And when we invite God into the center of hard things in life, which in my book I refer to it as mud pits, um, there's gold in it because we see what God wants to do, how he works through it, the miraculous. There's so many amazing and powerful moments so we get to experience the bigness of God in the hard parts of life. And that's what I wrote about. So interestingly enough, um, I didn't even know I was going to write this book. I have three other devotionals that I've actually written and not pub published. Um, and I thought for sure when it's time to start publishing, when I enter into that season, you know, obviously I'm going to publish the ones I've already written. Um, but God took me on a totally different journey. And I was literally in my office, just broken, um, really feeling like I've already gone through so much in life. I'm entering into a new season of victory and the mountaintop experience. And I was sidelined by a mud pit and it took me by surprise. I broke down, um, and was really struggling to come up for air. And the Holy Spirit just started speaking to me and reminding me of everything I know, everything I know about myself, everything I know about God, everything I, 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 I've been here before. I've been in the mud pits of life. I know what to do. And it was like, the Holy Spirit was saying, get up, you've been here, you know what to do, you have the tools. And in that moment, I got up, I went to my desk and out poured a whole intro for a book because I decided that I was not going to let the enemy have the upper hand. Not only was I going to stand victoriously as a child of God before the good outcome, I was going to declare the bigness of my God over the situation. I was going to hear him for my position, know what to do, but I was also going to write my way through it for a handbook um, for you. And so that's how this book was birthed. It was birthed through the mud. And so it caused me to reflect and go, how have I been able to get through so many overwhelming situations? And the whole format came out. I really had a good idea of the chapters, the layout, everything. I talk about the different ways that we respond naturally when we get hit hard in life and the description of what that looks like so that we can identify how we respond to hard situations in life so that we can ultimately be conquerors in Christ Jesus and move into what I call mudslayers. And the mudslayers are rooted in their identity as a child of God. They know what they have through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. They have built a trust walk with God so that no matter what goes on around them, they're, they know they're going to be okay. They feel the effects of what's going on, but ultimately they know I'm going to get through this because I know who my God is. And so the first section of this book, I call it laying the foundation. And that is where we talk about um, cultivating an intimacy with God, a solid relationship. And through that, we start to identify what we believe about ourselves, what we believe about God, 
um, what God says about us so that our identity is no longer formed around our circumstances or how we feel or what other people have said, even good or bad. I mean, sometimes our identity can be formed around uh, the cheerleaders in life and all the affirmation that we get from other people. And it's still going to rock us because then you have that one critic that comes in and causes you to crumble. And so it is so important, whether it's negative or positive, to make sure that your identity is not rooted in anything that can be taken away at a moment's notice, but totally rooted in who God says you are. So that's the first section of this book, laying the foundation, developing a solid relationship with God and really being firm footed in your identity. And the middle section of my book is the mud pits. A lot of common mud pits that we all go through as a life coach, and as somebody who's been in the ring of life, <laughs> where I have experienced a boatload of mud pits, um, some more than anybody have ever experienced in their lifetime, and on some levels, not nearly as much as what others have experienced, but there are these constant themes um, that I started to recognize, especially when I um, started life coaching clients. And these barriers and these blockages that cause people from being able to move forward. I bring in the truth of God's word and we walk through those things. We talk about the unhealed heart and how a lot of us are walking around with old wounds in our heart and not even realizing it. Our minds can tell us we're free and we're healed and that's in the past, but certain things will happen that will trigger us, that will squeeze us, that will cause um, the truth that we still have heard in our heart and how to identify that and what God wants to do because Jesus wants to heal your heart completely. And I don't know if even the body of Christ who has a relationship with God really understands that Jesus is that powerful, that he doesn't want to just save you once and you've got you know, eternal life to look forward to. You've got heaven, but here and now he wants to heal you and free you um, and move you to a place of radical victory. So we talk about the unhealed heart, um, which grief and loss is a huge part of it. So we, we talk about some good tools that help you walk through that to get to your victory, inviting God into the center of the pain. Um, and what he does is pretty powerful. The other thing, well, actually the beginning of the middle section, I talk about the, the fall of man and that it was, um, it was a effect of a lack of trust between um, man and God and how that is played out and how it's still playing out and how a lot of us will say, oh yeah, we trust God, but when we get hit with unsuspecting circumstances, that is going to reveal to us whether or not we are fully in a trust walk with God. And so that's really the goal is to walk through the mud pits of life and really start to develop that trust and faith walk that's available and powerful. I have a chapter in here called the breakdown mud pit. Um, and I share in total transparency. I do a lot, <laughs> a, um, funny, not so funny breakdown moment and how it was a huge opportunity for me to look at myself and realize where I was out of alignment with God and where my focus was off. And so the breakdown mud pits are really powerful. A lot of people are afraid of breaking down, so they shove things down and then all of a sudden it surfaces like a crazy volcano. So I kind of take you by the hand and help you um, become less overwhelmed with messy emotion, emotions uh, so that you can walk through them with victory and power and you don't have to be this empty shell that just goes around and says, I'm fine when you're not. So that's called the, uh, the breakdown mud pit. And then another chapter in here um, is called the people pleaser mud pit. And most of us don't want to admit this one and that's okay read the chapter anyway, because what God showed me as I was um, walking through um, this particular season with some clients and allowing him to speak into it, what he revealed actually shocked me. And then it was actually really beautiful 
because God started to speak into this beautiful truth that we were actually made to desire to have affirmation from a source and that we have it hardwired in all of us. This is not just, oh, those are for the insecure people. I don't care what anybody thinks. There is something inside, and that, that could just be what I call a cemented mutter barrier that is having a hard time really confronting the truth in your heart that we all are wired with this need to be affirmed and how it's through God and God alone, and it's our freedom. So that was a powerful chapter that I wrote as the Holy Spirit just downloaded something that I wasn't even fully aware of in myself and others. And as I came alongside others, people were really getting some crazy freedom. So it was really cool. And then I wrote about it. Um, the other thing I talk about is the comparison mud pit and how easy it is to compare ourselves and decide whether or not we're successful based on you know, numbers, followers, um, accolades, position at church, position at work, um, position in your house, and social media, and all of these things that are just woven into our culture, how to really break it down and focus on God and what He says and recognize that your freedom is in knowing what he says and what he thinks about you and has absolutely nothing to do with anybody else. And um, it's freeing, it's victorious, and it's awesome. So you should read my book. <laughs> okay, so the other chapter I talk about is just how often we go through life feeling like the next is gonna satisfy us or we need this to satisfy us and I call it the fillers mud pit. What are we filling ourselves with that is ultimately um, leaving us still hungry and unsatisfied? And we break that down. And I talk about um, how when we bring God into that place, how he satisfies us above and beyond um, that our complete and total fulfillment is actually in him. So I break that down. We talk about that. And... Um, it, it, it was interesting because even though I knew the whole layout of the book and what I was going to say and what I was going to write about, my book was actually written out of order. Um, the Holy Spirit helped me put every chapter in proper order, but that's not how the chapters came out. I thought that I was at my lowest point when I wrote the intro. I thought this mud pit is so overwhelming. I don't care. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to rise. I'm going to kick the enemy and the you know what. And I'm going to write a book on tools for all of you only to get hit with more things. Only to get squeezed in ways that I had never experienced before. Only to move into uncharted territory and feel totally lost and feel like I was losing my footing. And all of a sudden, it was like the Holy Spirit would just speak into it and remind me, no, this is it. This is the next, cha next chapter. Focus on me. And all of a sudden, it was like another mud pit would come at me from left field and squeeze another chapter out. So I wrote this through the mud. It wasn't just a one one time experience and then, oh, you know, everything was just wonderful and great. And I just like bubbled this book out. It took me two years of going through really, really overwhelmingly hard things, but God, he showed up over and over and over again. And he helped me put together an entire book of tools, a life manual that is 100% partnered with his truth to take you deeper in a trust and faith walk deeper than you've ever known before, to set you up on something so solid that you are literally living in the freedom that Jesus paid for. The end of my book is how it's, it's basically moving into mud slayer. And there are three foundational things that I have learned through the mud on what to do when everything else is crashing around me. And I'm talking about those moments where 
you don't have time to go and curl up in a ball and cry. There's a time and a place for that, and I talk about that. I think it's important to curl up in Jesus' lap and just fall apart, and so we talk about that. I'm talking about those moments where you have to be moved into action. You cannot lay down because life is crumbling around you. You have just gotten hit hard with something overwhelming. And this last section of the chapter, once you have, once you are anchored in your identity, you are rooted in a relationship with God. You are learning how to trust him. You're learning how to um, bring him into the center of everything. You're dealing with the emotions. You're putting everything in its proper place. You've experienced the bigness of God. You've experienced the healing touch of God. And then all of a sudden you get hit again. And this chapter, the, the first one in the third section is called Rise. Because at those moments, that's when you need to choose to rise and remind yourself of who God is, what you have in him, and all of his promises. And you stand firm. And then we move into going to him and learning your position and seeking him and tuning into your lead commander, tuning out the noise, tuning into God. And you can do this because you've now cultivated a relationship with God in the quiet, in the secret place. When the, the volume of life is up, you can still hear the voice of the Lord because you are so familiar with his voice. You've, you've discerned and learned how to recognize his voice that pierces through the storm and speaks to your heart and gives you a position. Now, sometimes the position is to be still and trust him, but sometimes it's a call to action. Sometimes Holy Spirit wants to give you a download, a strategic plan. And so that's what we talk about in that chapter is how to go to God to get your position because he has a position for you in all things at all times. And then we move into worship. And understanding what worship is. It's not just something that we say for a carved out time at church on Sunday. It is literally connecting and engaging with the heavenlies. It is getting our, our whole being, our, our soul lined up with heaven, declaring the bigness of God over our situation until all of the all consuming chaos of the situation that was taking us down completely loses power because we are elevating the name of God above our situation and he's moving powerfully in us and through us. And so that chapter is called Worshiping Warrior. The last chapter of my book is called Repeat because as I've learned, I'm going to get hit again and I'm going to have to learn to repeat the things that I've learned, to go to God, to remind myself who he is, who I am, to look back at the trail and all the times that God has shown up in my life. And it, and it takes that constant um, training of recognizing that as, we, as long as we live here on earth, we're going to face hard things. But God, he's bigger. And so we can pull on these tools and we can implement them from here on out as long as we are here on earth because life here on earth, we're not promised a perfect life. We're just promised a perfect God that's going to partner with us all the time in all things. And that's my book. So you should buy it. I highly recommend it, but I'm not the only one who highly recommends it. I've actually gotten a lot of feedback from a lot of people, um, both men and women. A lot of, um, a lot of people have been saying like, wow, I did not know that that was available, that I could actually have that kind of a relationship with God. And it actually took them into a depth of God that they didn't even know was available. I've had some people who have a rock solid walk with God and they're like, this is the book. This is a must read. This needs to be in Bible studies. Um, and, and, and even, um, men, they're saying this, this needs to be in men's Bible studies. This is going to take you to that rich and satisfying life that Jesus says is ours. And it wasn't me. <laughs> it, it's just the Holy spirit moving through me because I just have a simple walk with him and my simple walk with him has led me to experience something so profoundly powerful, I had to write about it.
because I want you to know about this life too. So there it is. That's what I wanted to talk about today. You can get a copy of my book, a signed copy through my website. I also have journals that I designed um, with my designer and it's, it's a blank lined journal um, with scriptures woven through it and quotes and polls and the description of a mud slayer or mud warrior to remind you of what you're moving towards. Um, I really, I originally thought that I was going to do a Bible study along with my book. Um, but after I was done with my book, uh, one of the things that I really felt pretty strongly that God wanted to do was, was to really, um, learn how to hear his voice instead of me telling you what I think you should focus on or asking thought provoking questions that could be really good and powerful. Um, but I want to encourage you actually to journal instead. So when you're reading my book or any book or even the Bible and something just comes out and it, and it, it causes an emotion or you just feel it resonate. I call it sinking in your heart, sinking in your spirit. And it resonates. Oftentimes that's something that God wants to speak into. And you could just take it and slow down and connect with it and journal it out and process through it. There's so much power in journaling. Um, how many times have you read something and you find that your mind just kind of trails off? Journaling causes you to have to connect with what you're reading, with your mind and your heart and slow everything down. And it, um, it actually just solidifies what you're taking in. And it gives you that space to then say, God, what are you saying to me? What are you wanting to say to me in this moment? Or maybe it's a time where this book stirs something up that you didn't even know was in there. And you have that opportunity to highlight and note and journal. I have a lot of clients that hate journaling. They're like, oh, I hate writing. I won't write. And I always encourage them to do it. Just, just do it. Just trust me. Just start. And they finally do after some, you know, protesting, but they do. And, um, even my kids and they're like, wow, actually journaling is really powerful. It's really helped me to connect with what I was actually thinking and feeling that I couldn't connect with before and connecting with your why is huge until you connect with what you're actually believing, thinking and feeling. It's really difficult to put anything in its proper place let alone invite God into it. So journaling is powerful. We've designed one that matches with the Life is Muddy book. So kind of cool. Um, those are available. Hard covers are available on my website, but you can do the paperback on Amazon. My book is available on all um, online bookstores. You know, Amazon Prime seems to be the most popular. But if you've stayed with, these, with me this long, I just decided that if you want to go on my website, I am going to put a 15% off code at the description panel of this video and discount all of the hardcover, paperback books, hardcover journals, and I also have a Trust More, Worry Less mug, and I'm going to discount that 15% off also. So anyway, I hope that this uh, video of me talking about my book kind of just helped you understand where I was at, little backstory, and what goes on between those pages. So check it out and be blessed.